but I came to praise the Lord. I'm thankful to be in the house of God tonight. Let's invite him to join here with us, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house again. Thank you, Lord, that we can come in from the cares of life and work and just our, our personal lives. And we can come in and we can just sit at your feet, Lord. I pray that you would meet the need of every person in this place today. Let us please you with our worship and our praise tonight. And everybody say in Jesus' name. and stories of what they think your life but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're good good
searching for answers far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word Lord good good Father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am you're good good Father it's who you are it's who Wednesday night. Praise the Lord. We've made it halfway through another week. Yes. Hallelujah. And so many smiling faces for it to be halfway through the week. Amen. I'm so glad to see everyone here tonight. It is, it's so good to have this midweek refreshing. It's like pulling up to the gas station and getting refilled so you can make the rest of that trip. Amen. Um, just a few announcements. Please remember uh, Zoom prayer meeting on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. If you're not joining us and it's because you don't know how to get on, please get with Brother Brock or Andrew, Sister Lisa, Sister Casey. They, they're the techs around here. Um, they can get you on, so don't ask me. Amen. Men's conference. Getting up here, men, just a few more weeks, February 10th and 11th at the Sanctuary Church in Bessemer. So you don't even have far to travel. You can go home, take a nap in between the uh, Saturday service if you want to, and then go back at night. So y'all make plans to be there. And then Ladies Conference, March 10th and 11th. Woo! We're going to have a bigger crowd than the men with these ladies, y'all. Um, ours is a little further away. It's in Trustful. So y'all go ahead and be making plans and arrangements to be off from work, uh, to stay there if you want to. Some of us are going to be making the trip back Friday and then going back that night. So if you need a ride, get with us. We'll, we'll make a way to get you there. Also, this Sunday, fifth Sunday dinner. Woo, yes. We always love food at the house of God. Yes, it's going to be like when we get to heaven and that banquet table that never runs empty. It just keeps refilling with all of our favorites. So um, y'all come and join us. Please remember our uh, fifth Sunday dinners are not just about us getting together to eat. It's about inviting someone to come and be with you, like a friends and family day. Please invite someone to join you this Sunday. Church service itself will start at 10, not Sunday school. So please remember that. If you come at 11 o'clock for church service, you're going to almost miss it. You'll be coming in on the tail end. So just be aware of that. Um, and also, please let's remember the family that um, Sister Tiffany had asked uh, the church to pray for the Franklin family to have a little two-year-old boy Eli let's please pray for him and starting this Sunday sister Tiffany I got your message late and I just wasn't able to do it today but starting this Sunday we're going to start a little uh, simple fundraiser um, it's going to be candy grams for Valentine's Day and they're going to be so cute y'all she has the best idea um, it's going to be little cards, and it's going to be things like, I like the way you roll, Valentine, and it'll have a little Tootsie Roll on it. Is that not too cute? Just several little different sayings. They're $1 a piece. So be saving your fives and your tens and bring them to the house of the Lord and put your order in, 
and get your Valentines for all your friends here at church, all your friends at work, at school, wherever you go throughout the day. Get your Valentines here from New Life. One dollar a piece. So that'll be this uh, Sunday. We'll have samples for you to look at and what you want to order. So bring you fives and your tens and a few twenties here and there. <laughs> we have some prayer requests tonight, of course. Um, the Roysters have some very extreme prayer requests. Sister Royster herself needs some prayer. And then they have a situation with their nephew um, that is dire need of prayer. Um, also, Sister Allen isn't feeling well tonight. This weather's just got a bunch of people over. Of course, Sister Jessica's not here tonight. Just several that need prayer. So let's go before the Lord in prayer tonight together. Lord Jesus, we come to you tonight lifting up your name, God, giving you thanks and all the things that you have done for us, Jesus. Lord, the way that you have kept us, God, and the way that you have brought us together into your house again. Lord, we ask you, Jesus, to touch each and every one of these requests, God. Give them strength in their bodies and their spirits, God. Lord, in their hearts, God. Lord, we ask you to lift each and every one up. Lord, whether that need be physical, mental, or whatever, Jesus. Lord, you see the need of everyone, and we know that you are taking care of it. But we come to you in obedience to your word, God, asking Jesus in your name, hallelujah, that you would work in each one of these. Lord, we ask you, God, to open up our minds tonight as we hear your word. Lord, for understanding our hearts, that we would accept it and apply it to our lives and our spirits, Jesus, that we would apply it to each and everything that we do. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you have ever run into a, a situation in your life where you just felt like there was no way? There was just no solution. There was no way it was going to work out. And how many of you ever had a God that came through? How many of you have ever had a God that made a way where there was no way? The song says he's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. He's a miracle worker. And he's all that and a whole lot more. But so no matter what situation that you find yourself in tonight, you just know that you have a God. And there is nothing too hard for that God. And he is going to meet you at your place of need tonight. So worship with us as we sing Waymaker. darkness 
worship you. I worship you. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a huge hand clap of praise. Oh, what a mighty God. Genesis chapter 1. I just want to, want to add a, a few scriptures with a scripture that we read Sunday. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters, upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be 
light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Could we pray for just a moment? Lord, I just thank you for the anointing that's in this room and thank you for the freedom of our worship tonight and lord i just pray that the word will go forth god and that it will instruct us and it will lead us and it will encourage us and help us to grow in jesus name amen you can be seated this this thought came to me and uh, it should have been should have been very elementary and sh should have been very simple, but I don't know why it took 58 years for this thought to come to me, but darkness was here first. I mean, y'all probably already got that. It took me 58 years just to comprehend that darkness was here first. Now, in the beginning, and, and when we talk about the beginning, we really don't know anything about the beginning. I asked, I asked one person uh, before, I said, hey, look, describe the beginning. You can't describe the beginning. You can't even describe God. God's a spirit. You can't describe God. Even in the Word, the Bible says in the Word that he hides his people under his wing as a chick. And so I asked this question of God, then does God have feathers? And they said, Lord, no, God doesn't have feathers. I said, well, it's scriptural. You can get really messed up if you want to, just taking things out of context in the word of the lord amen but 58 years darkness was here first in the beginning darkness stood alone it was by itself it had no enemy it had no ruler it's just by itself it stood alone it thrived darkness thrived in darkness and it ruled over darkness nothing could overcome the power of darkness it was there by itself all alone. It was its own worst enemy, and it was the most powerful force outside of God in the universe. Darkness. Darkness. Not until something more powerful than darkness. And I don't know if, if God had an actual throne that he was standing or sitting on when he made everything and called everything into existence. But I can just see this great, big, powerful God of ours stepping out in the abyss of darkness and just uttering, let there be light. And in an instant, darkness lost all control. It lost all power, all, all rulership, all ownership. It lost everything at the very words of the Lord saying, let there be light. Do you know why, my friends? Because if God says it, it's going to happen. If God says it, it's going to happen. And there's nothing that darkness can do about it. And guess what? There's nothing that anything else can do about it. It's kind of like going to jail and wanting to fight. It's not a good place to try that. I, don't ask me how I know this, but uh, I, I was on the other side of the other side of the the bars. Not uh, I used to go to the the jail and Shelby County Jail and preach, and I loved this. At the booking station, uh, the the booking officer weighed about four hundred pounds, five maybe. I mean, he was a big guy. And in the at the back of the wall, there was a a, a big sign there that said, "This isn't Burger King." You can't have it your way. Amen. And it's a lot of things with God. This isn't Burger King. You can't have it your way. When you're talking about the Word of God, you can't have it your way. It's going to be God's way. When darkness said, hey, I'll thrive alone, I'll stay alone, and I'll, I'll always rule, you can't have it your way, darkness, because you have a God that is so powerful that just His voice speaks light into existence in the midst of darkness can't have it your way now the next thing that God did he never stopped doing the next thing that he did he never stopped doing he divided the light from darkness 
And friend, he's still doing that today. He's still doing that today. Darkness and light cannot coexist. The, 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 the light in here is either on or it's off. There's no gray area to where there's light on this side of the room and darkness on this side of the room. You can't divide it out that way. Even in the most gross darkness, one strike of a match a hundred yards away will catch your attention. But still, it cannot survive alone. Now, we know that darkness represents sin. And light represents God's holiness. Darkness represents sin. And light represents God's holiness. And sin and holiness cannot coexist. I'm, I'm trying, some of you fell off right there. I'm trying to get you back on. It, you can't live in sin and then be holy at the same time. You can't live in holiness and sin at the same time. It works both ways. Which side of the track do you want to be on? I want to be on the side that's working with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd, I'd, rather, be, I'd rather be holy. How about you? I'd rather be holy than living in sin. But I can't have both. But my, we want both. Now look, I'm a, I'm a spoiled brat child in, in God's neighborhood. When Sister Brock, I, I'm the spoiled brat child when I'm in God's neighborhood because I come to his table and I ask for things. I'm always asking him for things. Do you know what? I can't bring a sinful lifestyle in front of the throne and say, God, I just need you to bless me because darkness and light can't coexist. Sin and holiness can't coexist. And God doesn't bless anything that is darkness because he says, hey, even I create light in the darkness and when we walk in the light, listen to me now, when we walk in the light, then we can come into the throne room of God and qualify to ask. Oh, come on. I, 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 love, I love light. If you don't believe me, you can ask two of my toes. Amen. Because you will break a toe in darkness. You'll, stump into, you'll, you'll, you'll stub into things in darkness. You'll, you'll bump into things. Somebody said, well, you can just go from the light that's in the room. Friend, when there's no light in the room, there's nothing but darkness there to maneuver in. Now, a blind person, a blind person can maneuver in darkness. I, I, uh, Sister Christy and uh, uh, Brother Joy and Sister Brock and I, we have uh, two friends that are blind. And really, to be honest with you, uh, sometimes you can't tell it. Sometimes you can't tell it. And, and, and Stephen, he's very comical. When he introduced me to his wife, he said, Be careful, Brother Brock, how you look at her. I've got my eye on you. <laughs> Amen. It just can't coexist. But now, you never would think that, that Stephen was blind at times because he gets around. We, we walked in a restaurant one night in Montgomery, Alabama after a men's conference. And Stephen just kind of sensed that something was going on. And he said, what's happening, Brother Brock? I said, well, we're all in suits, and they're not, and they're looking at us funny. He said, wait till they found, up, found, wait till they found out that I drove here. <laughs> he said, they'll really look at us funny. It can't go. It can't go. Do you know why that there's times that he looks like he's not even blind? Because he's gotten used to the darkness. Do you know why people continue to sin and sin and sin and never find a place of repentance? Because they get used to the darkness. They're used to moving around in the darkness. But you know what? When you move around in darkness, you don't have a clear vision of where you're going. You're just kind of going in the flow, hoping you don't hurt nothing, hoping you don't hit nothing, hoping you can navigate through this life. But if you walk in the light, you're walking in a clear vision. You can see every obstacle. You know every trap the devil's trying to lay. You can see everything before you. You can see God going before you because the Bible says God is light. So if there's light in your life, there is evidence that God is there. So we've got to have some light. You just got to walk in the light. You can't be walking in darkness. You can't walk in darkness because sin and holiness, it cannot coexist. It cannot coexist. 
Now, if you live a holy life, I, 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 I hate to say this to us, but you can live the holiest life you desire, but it's still impossible to live a sin-free life. You're going to either willfully or unwillfully sin every single day. But that's not an excuse to just throw in caution to the wind and living in every kind of sin that you could name and just having a mental cons consent in your mind that I am saved, that I am right in my actions and right in, I'm do in what I'm doing. It only means that when I am walking in light and sin comes in my life, I need to repent of what I'm doing because if, I, if I'm not careful and I keep walking in this darkness and I keep, keep sin in my life, I'll never find light again. I'll never find the path that God's on. I'll never find the direction because my, my mind becomes blind now. The more you stay in darkness, the more you adjust to it. The more you get used to it. And the more you stay in darkness, the harder it is to find the light and the only way that we can walk and find the light of God is we've got to find his face. We've got to find his presence because wherever God is, light is there. So I don't seek I don't seek to try to clean up to come to church and try to get sin out of my life to come to church. I seek God. Where do I find him? I can find him right here at an altar. And once I find him, I find light. And I find the capability and the ability to begin to walk in that light. Why? Because I'm not walking in, in, in any light that I hold, but I'm walking in God's light. There's a difference in flashlights. My wife, some things she buys, and I think to myself, she paid too much for that. She probably thinks it of me, but the daycare has to have flashlights. And she gets them all for a dollar a piece. I'm like, where did you get where did you get ten flashlights for ten dollars? She said, It's over there at the Dollar Tree. I said, Sister, there's some stuff you shouldn't buy at the Dollar Tree. Because, you know, and I'm not bragging, but I, I don't want her to know this, but I'm fixing to tell her uh, I paid over a hundred dollars for my flashlight. Now somebody said, Well, I'm not gonna pay that much. Well, how much you wanna see? Amen. How much you want to see? If I'm outside, I want to see as far as the light will go. I don't want a dollar flashlight saying, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get by with this dollar flashlight. It won't even come on. And it's brand new, never been used before. Bought 10 of them for $10, three of them work. I mean, but my $100 flashlight every time I is, is on. And it's bright, Brother Richard. I mean, it, it is wide open bright. You don't have to worry about stumbling in nothing. You go in the woods, if it wasn't illegal, you could hunt at night with it. Amen. Amen. Because there's a difference in, in, in flash. I don't, want a, I don't want a cheap religion. I don't want a cheap walk with God. I don't want something that I know if I go in the drawer, it might or might not work. I want to know that I've got a relationship with God that when the light comes on, it, it illuminates. Oh uh, come on! I, I don't want I don't want cheap. I don't want I don't want cheap. But now look, even in that, no one's perfect. God knows we're weak. He knows we're weak. He He ought to know He made us. He knows that we're prone to darkness. We're prone to sin. But only God. There's some things that you can do for yourself, but there's some things that you need God's help in doing. And only God can separate light from darkness. And only God can separate sin from holiness. And only God can help us to walk in light. We need him. We don't, sometimes we don't think we do, but we need him. We need him. There's not anything. You couldn't even take a breath without him. So why not take an Take a step with him. Amen. Only God can separate it. Only God can help us. 
Now, God has no desire for us to walk in darkness, to live a life of continual sin. And his desire is for everyone, every one of us, to walk in his, and he calls it marvelous light. Oh, could you add some description words to it? Marvelous, wonderful, I mean, awestruck. Uh, uh, Brother, Brother Royster's uh, pet word, it, 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 God is awesome, 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 awesome. Because you see, if, if, if God separated light from darkness, then he separates holiness from sin, and light, Light is simply, somebody said, well, what's a, define light for me. I, I know what light is, but define it for me. Well, he, here's a complex, and, and you know, it's going to put your thinking cap on. It's going to cause you to think a little bit. A good definition of darkness is uh, light separated from darkness. The absence of darkness. The absence of darkness. And you see, if darkness is sin, Romans 3 and 23 says, For all have sinned. That's you and me, friend. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, the glory of God is God's manifest beauty of his holiness. So when you can say God's glory was all around me, you could also say in the same context that his holiness surrounded me me it's his his holiness is his glory and guess what his holiness needs to be our glory his holiness needs to be our glory and i don't know about us pentecostals but we've got things so turned around and so messed up and it's our man-made religion we believe that holiness begins on the outside when holiness does not begin on the outside if holiness is not created in the heart, you'll never see holiness manifest itself. If holiness is never created on the inside, you'll never see holiness come to light in your life. You'll, because there's no source of it. In other words, if God is light, then, then His holiness is Him. Getting inside of us is the regeneration of His Spirit. And you could say it like this, when I receive the Holy Ghost, a light come on in my life. A light shined in my life. Now, I, was, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I did. But when the light come on, all of a sudden I begin to see some things clearly now. I begin to see some things in the Word of God. Because listen, friend, if God's light is shining in your life, when you get into the Word of God, He'll reveal revelations to you that He won't reveal to anybody else. Why? Because I now have His light. I have His holiness, His glory, and His revelation. you got to have light in your life. You can't walk in darkness. You can't walk in darkness. And we've been doing this walking in series the, the, the past few weeks, and this is the last lesson in our walking in series. Our first lesson, if you'll remember, we talked about walking in obedience. And obedience is the adoption of God's will for our life. When you walk in obedience, you're walking in His will. You will follow His will when you walk in obedience. And then the lesson number two was wisdom. And wisdom is the adoption of God's view of the world around us. You see things the way God sees things. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. And lesson three, uh, so, uh, Sister Casey so uh, uh, profoundly did. Lesson three is the uh, uh, love is the adoption of God's heart towards others, including himself. So you just love everybody. You just love everybody. And light. Now, light is, however, light is it's totally different. It, it is the total, here's light, walking in light. It is the total rejection, the total refusal to do, have anything to do with anything but God. Light is the total rejection of anything that is not of God. If it's not of God, then I, I don't want to walk in it. 
corner. If it's not of God, then I, I can't be found there. If it's not of God, you don't need to go near it. If it's not of God, then hey, don't go to the edge of Eden and watch the tree. Don't even look at it. If it's not of God, don't walk there. Why? Because you're walking in darkness if it's not of God. If, it, if, it's, if it's more than drawing near to God, then it is the abject refusal to do anything else but draw near to the Lord. What are you doing? I'm walking in light. Why are you walking in light? Because I'm drawing near to the Lord. You can't walk in darkness and draw close to Him, but if you walk in light, my friend, you'll see Him. You'll have a visitation of Him. You'll come into His room. You'll be there where He's at. To walk in light is the furthest step that we can take. It's the furthest step that we can take to being like God. Oh, so, oh I, I, don't let me cross theology with you. If we're made in His image, shouldn't we be like Him? <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I'm patching this up now because some of y'all bleeding. <laughs> If we're made in his image, if he said, you know, I thought of myself when I created, oh, how powerful is that? I thought of myself when I created you. You're, you're, you're my image. You're my express image. Oh, I got to walk in light. <laughs> I got to walk in light. Why? Because I got to come, I got to become like him. Now, uh, it, it means, uh, to do that, it means holy Letting go of ourselves. Oh, I, I, see, I have a problem with that. See, my my ego gets in the way. I get an ego trip when I, you know, now, Lord, now, look, could, could you see how foolish I am at times? Now, Lord, you know, there's just a few little things that I can get by with. They're nothing major, God. But they just, could, could you see that just debating with God about that, how foolish that might sound? God, there's got to be a few things you can allow me to, you know, just a little bit of darkness. There's some darkness that pleases me, God. There's a little, and it's holy letting go of ourselves. It's saying, God, not my will, but your will be. It means being as vulnerable. You become, you become vulnerable when you get close to God. There's a, there's a sense of awe about you. There, 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 you, just, you ever been around somebody real famous and you just don't really know what to say or what to do? And you get around God, you don't know what to say, you don't know what to do. You just come into his presence, you get vulnerable. Man, you just, you, you just got to caution yourself a little bit. And, and it, it means total exposure to God. See, some, some people just want to walk in that half light that never exists. But you've got you, you've to be just total exposure. Can I say it like this? You got to have a total exposure to the sun. You got to have total exposure to him. You can't have a you can't have a spiritual solar eclipse in your life when there's times of darkness and times of shadows. You've got to have total exposure to God and total freedom to allow him to work in your life. Just Lord, if there's something that needs to be done in my life, you know, I think we need to pray the old prayer uh, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Totally, totally expose yourself to God. And it is, the, it is the height of everything. God's light. The perfect expression of a Christian virtue is walking in the light. It's the final endeavor to be everything. That's our final endeavor. To be everything that God called us to be. To live up, not to what we will, but to live up to what God will. Oh, come on, somebody. It changes our life. It changes everything about us. When we begin to lay down our world and begin to take up his world, when we begin to lay down our kingdom and take up his kingdom, when we begin to lay down our cross and we begin to take up his cross, it, it means everything, everything. It's the, it's the height of our Christian endeavor. Ephesians chapter 5. Somebody says, well, how do I walk in light? Two words. It's here in Ephesians chapter 5, New Living Translation. Imitate God.
Just do what I do. First, first guitar lesson I ever ever took, a guy was sitting on a stool across from me. I was sitting on a stool. He had a guitar. I had a guitar. He pressed one one note and said, just, just follow me. I pressed the same note. It, it sounded very mundane. You know, bloom, 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 bloom. Then again, you got to do that. You got to have a starting point. There has to be a simple starting point. But you know what? If you don't have somebody to imitate, it's hard learning by yourself. And so the, how do I walk in light? Imitate God. If God does it, you do it. If God does it, you do it. You can't, you can't, he's not that God that says, you know, follow me as, follow me as I follow others. He's not that God. He says, you follow me as I am it. <laughs> you know, I'm just here. You follow me. Imitate God. And here's, therefore, in everything you do, and it says there's a reason to it. Verse 1 says, because you are his dear children. In other words, if you're his children, if you're truly a child of God, you're going to imitate him in everything that you do. All right, now, hold on. Buckle up just for a moment because this, this, Paul keeps writing here. He doesn't stop. He wrote enough. He wrote more than enough right there, but he doesn't stop. And he says, live a life filled with love. If you're going to live a life filled with love, you better remove the darkness of bitterness out of your life. The darkness of hate out of your life. If you're going to walk in his light, you're going to live a life filled with love. Follow the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Let there... All right, now, fixing on this dark list here. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sin have no place among God's people. I've seen stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. Amen. Verse 5, you can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For the greedy person is an adulterer, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these things for sin. Well, you can do that. There's nothing says that you can't. My friend, there is a light that is shining that says darkness can't come up under it. Yes, I do have an excuse for not sinning. He said, don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Anger falls on darkness. Don't participate in these things that these people do. For once, for once, you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord, so live as people of light. Live as people of light, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. <laughs> Come on. I, I can't live in what's bad. I can't live in what's wrong. I can't live in what's false. But when you walk in the light of the Lord, you're living in what's good and what's right and what's true. Come on, i got to find light. How about you? i got to find his light. Have mercy. To draw closer to God, there must, there must be not only an exposure, full exposure to him, but to draw closer to God, there also must be full exposure to sin. You've got to expose your sin to God. You've got to open up the secret places of darkness in your life and expose them to him and let light shine on it. There's something about light. You see, we come out with a coronavirus and everybody's spraying. Lord, I, I, I probably exaggerate, but we probably spent a million dollars in 
and disinfected. And somebody, I told, I told one person, you're going to ruin your phone spray and it will last all. And I thought, that's all right, at least it's germ-free. But did you know what? Now there's a light. You just put your phone in this little device, push a button, and a light shines on it and cleans it and purifies it. And all you got to do is expose it to the light, and the light cleans it. You ain't got to spray nothing, wipe nothing, rub nothing. Just turn the button on. And that's the same way God is. His light. If you will expose yourself to his light, he'll begin to clean some things up. He'll begin to remove some impurities. He'll begin to move some imperfections in your life. You've just got to expose yourself to the light. You've got to, be, you've got to expose yourself to the light. But then when you find it, you've got to expose your darkness to him, your sin. And, the, and in the light, there is forgiveness. God forgives in the light. To choose to hold on to our hidden sins is the same as choosing to hold on to light, a darkness. If you, if you choose to hold on to your sins, I just can't see a person living their life in darkness and being able to fulfill everything that God called them to be when he created them. See, light makes it possible to see. But also... A lighthouse is a warning flag. It warns it, the lighthouse warns ships of the coastline of impeding danger. It's also emergency lights warn drivers be cautious, move aside. There's a high-speeding vehicle. There's some things in your life that you just need to let go by you and not 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 affect you. Light speaks of security and re reassurance. In, when we're in a dark house, we hear an unfamiliar sound. Immediately we turn the light on because we want to see who's there and we want them to see us. And Smith and Wesson too, he'll be there. We want us, we want to see all. The, but the light's got to shine. The light's got to, you, you got to have a light to shine. See, see, light is something that can have a dramatic effect over everything that it touches. When we discover the holiness of God, we discover his light. When we discover his holiness, we discover his light. And when it affects our heart, when God's light, when his holiness affects our heart, you'll see it shine on the outside. It'll come out. It'll shine. See, we begin to grasp in his light the depths of his holiness. We just think it's a few standards of modesty, but the depths of God's holiness is so much more than the appearance of a person. The depths of God's holiness is capturing his heart. It's capturing his thought process. It's capturing the very things that's upon his ever being mind. We've got to capture that. We begin to grasp the depth of his holiness. And in difficult times, I must confess, in difficult times, it's hard to walk in the light because we can't see past the darkness. Friend, it's hard to walk in the light sometimes when the pain is outshining everything. It's hard to walk in the light when the hurt outshines everything, when the frustration outshines everything. I was... Excuse me. I, I was driving uh, my wife's old Equinox in a uh, well new Equinox. I was driving her car, and uh, uh, you ever heard this saying, "Frog Strangler"? It was coming a frog strangler. What that means is it was raining cats and dogs. It was coming a frog strangler. It was it was blinding rain, earth shaking thunder. Cloud to ground, lightning, intense gusts of wind. And I decided that I, I needed a little bit of gas, so I, I pulled into the Columbiana BP. We call it affectionately the kangaroo. It, they, they've sold it six times since it was the kangaroo, but everybody in Columbiana still calls it the kangaroo. It's the BP. Well, I'm going down to the kangaroo. 
in a, in a thunderstorm, intense thunderstorm, I pulled into the kangaroo. Went in, uh, I got frustrated. I, I started to not wanting to go to the kangaroo anymore because uh, I like it. If you pump gas and you use your card, they give you a receipt at the gas pump. I don't want to go inside for my receipt because they didn't give it to me. So I had to go inside. And so I, I, the, the clerk there, she said, how are you today? And I said, ma'am, I'm doing fantastic. How about you? And she said, how in the world can you say that you're doing fantastic. And she turned around that big plate glass window, and she turned around. She said, when it's doing this right here. And I said, ma'am, if you're going through a storm, you always need to know one thing. On the other side, and I pointed at that big old window, I said, on the other side of those gray skies, there's a light shining. <laughs> Come on. Friend, it doesn't matter what comes your way. It doesn't matter what storm blows into your life. You need to know that on the other side of those gray skies, there's a light shining. There's a light shining. Motel 6 said, we'll leave the light on for you. I believe they got the slogan from God. Come on, I believe he leaves the light on. I believe he leaves the light on for us. When, we, when we're when groping at darkness, I believe there's a light being left on for us. When we're trying to find out, when we're trying to find salvation and we're trying to find how to be saved, I believe there's a light shining. And as long as we know that there is a light shining for me, there's always hope in any situation. Any situation that you can come across, there's always always hope as long as you know there's a light on the other side of the gray skies. A lot of people have, uh, have been there. Uh, we went on a small vacation and um, we was going, we went to a, 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 a b and B. I I guess that's how you say it, in, in Ohio. And uh, I asked, where are we going? And they said, we're going to the ark. And I said, well, the ark's in Kentucky. Why are we going to, why are we lodging in Ohio? And they said, well, we got to go see the, the Creation Museum. And we go see, it's, it's halfway. And I said, okay, that's great. And it's nothing, going to see the ark was nothing what I expected, going to see Noah's ark. When I asked my wife, I said, really, I said, what sticks in your mind, Jeannie, about us going to see the ark? And she said, it's being loaded up on that big Greyhound bus and coming around that curve and seeing the ark for the first time in the big windows of that bus, how huge that thing is. She said, what sticks out in your mind? I said, it was a beautiful day. Sun shining, beautiful day. I said, I... They said the Amish built the ark. They lied. There were screws in it, and they don't have guns. <laughs> they, they, they don't plug nothing up. And if they screwed all that, all them screws in by hand, Lord, how much of 20, 30, 40,000 of them there doing it. But I said, you know what really, really stood out? Walking up that gangplank in the light. And as soon as you step into the ark, it's total darkness. And the and the and these big boom boxes is thunder is rolling, and it's shaking the floor and shaking the walls where you are, and you can feel it pressing up against you, and the vibration of that thunder begins to move you and begins to shake you, and then you begin to look up, and in the the window there, there's a there's light, there's there's lightning strikes and thunder rolling and lightning strikes, and I, and this is the sound of rain pelting that ark and my whole party that I went with they all moved on and moved into the common area but brother Gavin I just got lost two steps in the ark I thought to myself even when I'm surrounded by darkness God provides an ark of safety <laughs> come on no wonder there was a window in it. God said, Noah, I want you to know that I'm always going to shine a light in my people. 
There's always going to be a light to shine. For God. There's always going to be a window of hope that's going to shine for God's people. Come on, friend, if God is calling us to walk in the light, then let us be found living in the light. Let us be found living in his light, doing what God desires for us to do, doing what God called us to do, helping others, being the God, being Jesus on this earth for others around us. If we're created in his image, then let's act on his being. Let, let's, let us be the ambassadors of the Lord. Let us be found, let us be found walking in light. Are you thankful that when you were in sin, that God kept you? Friend, I don't know how many times, I don't know how many times that it was very easy that the Lord could have took my life in darkness. I don't know how many times I could have just been, just been put away somewhere in darkness. And when I was walking in the gross darkness, when you were walking in gross darkness, and it's the testimony that you won't tell anybody, God kept you and he began to shine something inside of your heart he began to shine a light something illuminated something began to glow in your heart and then the voice of God in a still small voice he says you are still mine I'm still your God I'm calling you I'm still pulling I'm still tugging and something inside of each and every one of us has to surrender to the darkness and say escape and let me go and then fall into God's arms and laying into the light are you thankful are you thankful are you thankful somebody said well they had an awesome they had an awesome testimony they were a drug addict and homeless and God saved them it's an awesome testimony but let me tell you a greater testimony well, I was all, always raised in church never got out of church God filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost when I was a child always lived filled with the Holy Ghost that's a greater testimony why because it's a greater testimony to say hey I, I was close to God all of the time I was close to him all the time but let me tell you a friend if you was found living in darkness and God called you into his marvelous light you're just as important as somebody that's been in it all their lives God esteems you just as important as they are I'm thankful light shines I'm thankful that even though I was not even comprehending that light was there. It was always shining, always following me, always trying to, to get me to get under the umbrella of light. John 1, beginning at verse 1, says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Don't confuse that. Not two entities there. Not two beings there. The Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life. I want to pause right there and just... just hash that out just a little bit in him was life it was light in him was life and the life was the light of men in him was life and that life was our life come on somebody my my true purpose my true purpose can only be found in God my true purpose can only, I'll never find my purpose searching darkness. If God is light, then if I find him, I find my purpose. And I want to tell you something. We live confused lives. 
simply because we don't know our purpose. When a person does not know their purpose, when they don't know what they're here for, you're going to live in confusion trying to find that. But if you can find God, you'll find your purpose. Come on. You'll find your purpose. He said, the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. My friend, is there an awareness in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirits tonight? Is there an awareness of God's light shining? Is there an awareness there? Tonight, if you're in darkness, it is time to turn a light on. It's time to turn a light on. Come out of that place for, of hopelessness and come out of that place of despair. Come out of the darkness and come to the light of the blessed hope of Jesus Christ, our Lord. All it takes is turning from sin and trusting the Lord to save you. For he gave himself. He gave himself. John 8 and 12, if you'll, if you'll stand. John 8 and 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of of life you can come to the altar if you want to or you can remain there but I would ask each and every one of us to do something for a few moments lift up a hand and lift up a voice and just begin to worship just begin to worship Come on, we're worshiping right now in the light of the Lord. And as you worship, as, as, as I worship, can we allow that light to illuminate some things in our lives and allow that light to draw us close and to draw us into His presence? Could we just take a few moments and then I'll, I'll, I'll step back to the, the podium and I'll dismiss us. Can we just take a few moments just to worship? Folks, the whole, the whole spiritual atmosphere has changed in this room. When God's people begin to call on His name, begin to worship Him and praise Him, it draws His presence. It's like a light. It's like a light has come on in our life. I believe God's showing some people some things right now in this marvelous light that He is shining in their lives. I believe He's showing you some navigation plans to how to get by some things and how to, how to move past some things that are slowing you down and weighting you down and causing you to live in the shadows of darkness. Lord, illuminate God. Illuminate your light. Illuminate your light in our lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
Lord, I just praise you, Jesus. I magnify you, Jesus. You can sense it, too. There's a wonderful presence of God's Spirit here right now. Just a sovereign, just a sovereign move of His Spirit. Could you ask Him just to speak to you? Could you ask Him just to speak to you, God? Just show me what you'd have me to do. God, you show me the plan, God. You show me the plan and let me live by it, God. Lord, I don't have enough intelligence to come up with my own plan for my life, God. But if you will show me the plan, I'll surely live it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord, in Jesus' name.